once again, everyone. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here with Weather for Weather Geeks Midweek Edition. Finally, a better day today after a fairly cloudy and gloomy stretch for a few days. From the weekend into early next week today, we saw some sunshine. We had a more seasonable afternoon. Now, at the airport, the temperature did fall just shy of our seasonal average of 61 on the 18th day of October. We had 59 officially at the airport today, but we were much closer to the average than we have been over the last couple of days. Yesterday's high was just 52 degrees. What a sunset this evening. Beautiful sky out there this afternoon with uh, fair weather clouds and different clouds at different levels moving in different directions. Good looking sunset at about uh, 635 or so this evening. In fact, our sunset this evening was at exactly 637 p.m. And over the next few weeks, few weeks you notice a big change, of course, in November. Uh, we're only two and a half weeks away from the uh, start of standard time, the end of daylight saving time. And so three weeks from today, our sunset will be all the way back at 5.10 p.m. You know, a lot of people have very strong opinions on the uh, changing of the clocks. There's a lot of confusion out there. A lot of people think a law has been passed uh, that uh, would eliminate uh, the changing of the clocks twice a year. That is not the case. Uh, a measure was passed in the House of Representatives, but not in the uh, Senate. And so we continue to observe daylight saving time and standard time at uh, different times of the year. This is not a subject I can get all that fired up about. It's not that big of an inconvenience to me to uh, change the clocks twice a year. And, you know, neither solution, getting rid of one or the other, is ideal in my book. If you get rid of daylight saving time, and then you, ha then you have uh, weird... You know, sunset times in the summer, it gets darker earlier. A lot of people like it being light outside at 8.30 or 9 in the summer. So that would be eliminated if you got rid of daylight saving time. If you went to daylight saving time year-round and got rid of standard time, then our sun uh, uh, sunrise in, you know, December and early January would be almost at 9 a.m. Not a lot of people would be very happy about that either. So, you know, there's drawbacks to all the different solutions. And it's, you know, again, I don't mind changing the clocks twice a year. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but uh, based on Facebook comments especially, a lot of people have some pretty strong opinions on the uh, matter. All right, no strong opinions about the weather this evening. It's pretty ho-hum from coast to coast with one exception. That is this area of low pressure spinning near Minneapolis. This is our weather maker coming our way as we go into tomorrow, late in the day, tomorrow night into Friday, and this will actually kind of start dumbbelling around the northeast and provide us with a few days worth of pretty unsettled weather taking us into the weekend. So clouds will thicken up by Thursday morning. The sky will look kind of threatening at times in the afternoon, but I'm not expecting anything more than a late day shower or a sprinkle towards sunset. The vast majority of the daylight hours will be just fine on Thursday. If you have outdoor plans, want to get some yard work done, especially after work, after school, you're going to look up and see a lot of clouds. It may look like it wants to rain, but I don't think much is likely until just about sunset or thereafter Thursday evening. But showers will then come and go later Thursday night into the day on Friday. This whole system kind of hits the brakes a little bit and uh, keeps us in a pretty cyclonic flow Friday into Friday night, Saturday. It's not going to rain the entire time. In fact, there may be prolonged stretches of dry weather uh, late Friday night into Saturday morning. But Friday evening for high school football, we have that chance anyway of seeing a couple of showers. Saturday probably gets off to a relatively decent start before this next disturbance in the flow comes down and might spread some showers our way again by Saturday afternoon and especially Saturday evening. Speaking of the weekend, we have the Youngstown. It's no longer a full marathon event. It's a half marathon and also a half marathon relay. They've gotten rid of the full marathon uh, portion of, of this event this year. It's going to be a great event nonetheless. Always a great time of the year, of course, to uh, run through Mill Creek Park. Uh, this kicks off at about 8 in the morning on Sunday morning. And for the runners, and there's a lot of people participating in the uh, in the event. They meet in front of Second Soul on Route 224 in Boardman and then heading into the park. Uh, we can expect chilly temperatures, mid-40s, maybe a shower, maybe a sprinkle here and there. Probably not going to rain much at all, but there'll be a gusty breeze, certainly. And again, chilly, chilly temperatures. Chilly temperatures also in our forecast for a couple of mornings early next week. Now, yesterday we, we talked a little bit about uh, the possibility of a frost and freeze Tuesday morning. But actually, there's been some model trends with a faster clearing of the sky now Sunday night into Monday morning that Monday morning we might might also have to be concerned, pardon me, with frost. I don't think there'll be a freeze Monday morning in our viewing area anyway, maybe in parts of central Ohio. Um, our better chance of reaching the freezing mark will come Tuesday morning. So frost will be possible both Monday morning and Tuesday morning, but temperatures hitting the 32 degree mark will be more likely, I think, Tuesday morning. Probably not going to see mid-20s or anything like that, but could some of the cooler nooks, some of the sheltered valleys, see a 29 or 30 Tuesday morning? That's going to be a possibility, I think. 
as uh, we will have a good recipe for radiational cooling, clear sky, and calm winds. As far as daytime highs go, it's going to be chilly through Monday, but actually a nice rebound coming next week. This can be a nice stretch of weather, I think, during the middle of next week. Tuesday, Wednesday, and probably into Thursday of next week, I think we'll see sunshine and afternoon temperatures rebounding into the 60s, might even flirt with 70 once or twice. But there are some big changes in the pattern coming beyond that period as we head towards the uh, home stretch of October. Look at all the snow that's likely to fall in parts of the uh, western U.S. and perhaps even towards the end of the next week some of the snow sneaks out into the uh, upper Midwest, places like Minneapolis, Fargo, uh, places like that. Um, but either way, this is a system that will probably produce wintry weather here. Not here, not around our area, but up here. But then that system will probably come east close to Halloween, bring us our next significant cool shot. So the end of the month probably features a pretty sharp cool down relative to the average. Quick look at the longer range. We're not going to show you any model uh, data this evening, but based on my current analogs for the upcoming winter, and that's a, that's a list of years that uh, we're still fine-tuning, and it's not a final list by any stretch. But we've come up with a preliminary set of years that we're going to use as analogs for the upcoming winter. And in those years, what happened in November? Don't forget our winter forecast covers December, uh, January, and February, but not November because that's still fall. Um, but in those same years, what happened in November? Well, there were some variations. Some years we had a cold November. Some years we had a warm November. But when you throw them all in the hopper and get an average... This is the map you see, pretty chilly November out west, mild in the east, and I'm starting to think that this kind of blend or this composite of all those years, uh, generally speaking, that's the signal that I'm favoring at this point. I, I am leaning towards a warm November for our area, um, but today's only October 18th. We've got plenty of time to uh, fine-tune that forecast, and we'll actually take an official stab at that November forecast either tomorrow evening or we might hold off until Monday, just depending. But uh, the way it looks right now to me that, you know, again, based on some model data, the model data looks kind of to me more like this rather than a the pattern or the uh, map being flipped, you know. So, you know, we'll see. But uh, that's, the way, that's the way it breaks down to me at this point. Stay tuned on that and stay tuned for the upcoming uh, annual winter forecast on November the 9th, more than likely. We haven't finalized that completely just yet, but it's probably going to be Thursday evening. November the 9th. We'll do a long, long version here online. All my social media networks will link to it. Uh, you'll, of course, uh, be able to watch it on YouTube and the WFMJ uh, 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 webpage, I should say, wfmj.com slash weather, the Storm Tracker 21 app as well. You'll be able to find it anywhere you want, both the short version and the long version. We'll do a blog version as well coming up in early November. Thanks for watching tonight, and I will see you right back here at this same time in this same place on Thursday.